Hello and welcome along to this week's edition of the Clare Champion Sports Chat Podcast. It's a feature interview this week with one of the best known and most successful Clare sports people in all the county's history. It's talking about Seamus Power, the man that won nine consecutive All-Ireland cross-country titles, along with representing Ireland on no fewer than 12 different occasions. I spoke to the cool mean man earlier this week, who told me how he reflects on his career. That was my past, I I see myself now as a complete farmer and a father and a husband and so so it was, it was a every time in my life and that's what I've eaten, that's all I did and uh, you know it's controlled my life maybe and uh, you know it was, a, it was a good time yeah what got you into it first? Uh, actually look there was a lot of sports there was a lot of sports in the weekends and things like local sports and things like that and then um, Peter Fanuke a neighbour up the road he's dead now but uh, he was involved in St Mary's at this club and uh, I was good friends with his son and he was watching me playing football and he knew I was fit enough so he just said to me one day he said will, will you go to Belly oh no Bearfield to run the county it was NSE at the time I was in uh, I didn't know much about the, the difference between NSE and BLE at the time but uh, I started off at NSE and uh, I ran down the 14 county championships first day out with a victory like so I hardly knew when I was winning or even how the team scored and worked so that's how I got into it Right, so it was kind of complete chance, really, and amazing, given how... Yeah, yeah, but yeah, look, I, I was probably fit enough anyway and active. I, I was going to probably do something, like, I was hanging out with the football and things like that, so I, I, I probably would have ended up being a runner, maybe, maybe not, but that, that's how it happened. But, um, but that was that was my first victory, but then I started training and everything, I suppose I could have told in the body and, and things like that, so it took a while before I got a victory again, like, but... Um, uh, and there was, there was a fella, yeah, what was his name? But he sneaked down the rabbit. He was clancy there. He owns the shop down to us. Right. Do you know him, right here, fella? Do you? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, Rico. Yeah, Rico. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, he was the number one fella all the way up up, up the Dunder age group. Next thing I popped out, so I, he was looking around to who this fecker is. <laughs> so the, but we had a lot of battles after that. But the, 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 that was the first day out, like a new a new kid. So yeah, that was my first day. Right, and you mentioned football there. Did, did the football boots last long, or, or did you? Did you no, nah, no. So looking at play, I, I, I played with Cool Mean, and then uh, sure, the, the schools. We, we got to the county final one year there in the schools. It was a small school, so that was a big achievement for us. Like, but yeah, I, I probably, I probably stopped playing football around fifteen. Oh, that one. Right, and that's just simply because the athletics took over, was it? Yeah, yeah, the athletics took over. I got involved there with uh, um, Noel Spellett, his brother Limerick, he, he was the coach. And then I got in with a bunch of young lads that were, that were you know, runners as well. And, I, I, and that's the group I was in, and everything, like, everything we'd done was running, you know. Uh, we were always thinking about training sessions and resting and eating and drinking water, taking vitamins and, you know, I was, I was, I was in that group and, and that's where I, I enjoyed and I stayed in that. So football was seen as, you know, a, a danger to my career as if you get injured or, I mean, I, w- I wouldn't have, to, I couldn't commit to both the two things at the level I, I had committed in the running like so yeah and like what specifically was it about athletics that kind of that, that drew you towards it or what was the, the draw you got from I suppose the success probably you know and yeah. something you can do in your own you know I, I, I don't know and, and as I say I got in with, with a bunch of great people like and uh, everything steered me in that direction like and uh, sure when you're when you find you're, you're fairly handy at something I suppose you feel like you can't get away from it either like you have to you're expected and maybe, maybe there was a bit of that as well so uh, yeah I know I enjoyed the athletics yeah and you mentioned there like at the start that it could nearly take over it, it, it's that kind of sport isn't it, it seems, well that was, that was later that was, that, was, that, was, that was later like so, so, uh, I, I went to scholarship in, in, when I was 19 to America and I mean, sure, there's a lot of pressure on out there. And back then, it wasn't it wasn't the country we live in now. Like it was just Ireland was so backward. Like I I, I went to East Tennessee, not knowing even how to turn on a computer. Right. You know, Do you know. I mean, you know, uh, we weren't even used to anything like pizzas or passes or anything like that. So it was it was a big change. And then you go out there and you're on your own, and you have to keep up your studies and and just a level of performance expected for you to hold on to your scholarship and you want to win yourself anyway like so, so I'm sure there's a lot of pressure so you have to do everything right you have to eat, sleep so really, I, I lived running and I was happy doing it yeah what did you go to study there? 
Well, I mean, the technology department, like, so, uh, I'm studying computer graphics, but sure, even the day I left East of the Sea, sure, I, I was falling behind, uh, you know, it was moving so fast, like, I mean, uh, alias, I mean, after that, uh, you know, computer animation, all that type of stuff, but, you know, I, 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 even though I was studying this, uh, I was, I was always thinking of running, and that was my main priority. So um, even when I came back to Ireland, I just walked for a while, but I didn't even train for the time altogether. So it was always running that was taken. You know, I believe that you only room in one in your head for one thing to really do right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was running. I was running. I did that again, and that's why when I retired now and I moved away from it. I'm completely focused on my dairy farm and, and at, at the same level, like, you know, and commitment. Yeah. And, I mean, the, the experience you got, because even, like, the likes of Dermot would have said, we, I know he was in, in Providence as well, like, the, the experience of, of the way things were done in America or the kind of, the, even the, the style of training and all the rest of it, like, that, that kind of would stand to you then when you, when you come back home to have that under your belt. Yeah, um, you know... Yes, and the facilities are out and everything. It's like it, it could go either way, you know. You, you you can you can overtrain, you can get lost out there, you can over race. We done a lot of racing, so you have to be awful careful. And if you if, if you weren't if you weren't an individual that was there to control yourself, you know, and and, and say no sometimes, like you know, or hold back and things, you could get burned out. And it happened a lot, a lot an awful lot of Irish people went out there. And they're still out there, like, and I'm sure they're happy out there, but they never had the careers they thought they would have. Like, I'm just hung on there just to get through college, and then they just been working and stayed in, stayed in America, like. But you know, if you, if to, you know, it's it, it's a tough road to be a successful athlete, like, even though the facilities and all are there and the coaching, like, there's, there's a lot more to it. So, but it definitely was. It was a great exposure. Uh, nothing like traveling to educate a man and. Uh, but my most, most of my success, success came when I came back from, from America. I improved, you know. Maybe, but maybe it's because I took everything on board. I learned when I was in the States. And now I was more in control of myself. And, you know, I could pick my own races and training. And, and, and you know, I was calling the shots. And uh, I, I improved uh, greatly. Yeah, and I was reading a piece there this morning that uh, I've, uh, you had a training partner in Dublin, I think, that came down to yeah. to West Clare at one stage he, and found the hills were just yeah, yeah. unbelievable. Look at, uh, he was my competitor for three years, and then in 2000, we're at, we're at going back from the Europeans, I can't remember which one, a European class country, um, I'm not sure, 2000, where we were in 2000, I don't know, I forget, but he, he rang me up just before Christmas and he says, you know, we weren't really friends, <laughs> just acquaintances. And he says, well, you going to Kenya with me to train. He knew that I was the type of athlete that he could train with. That, you know, I, I, you know, I'd be capable of training with him and I'd be dedicated to the cause. And uh, we hooked up with Noah Berkeley and we went off to Kenya for six weeks training and we came close friends after that and we're still friends. You know, and we trained a lot afterwards, and I moved up to Dublin and stayed in his place and everything. So it, it, was, it was great, and, and it did excel me on, you know. So um, I, I ran some a lot of my PBs were around 2000, 2002 on the track, and it was all down to a big stints of training with him abroad and in Dublin. Right. Kenya, I mean, obviously, there's a great history of athletics there. Is that what drew you out there to, to, to do that training? Sure, look, Noel Berkeley had a good friend out in Kenya, and he had all the contacts, and. Uh, um, went out to film there called Sang. He was the steepest stranger. He was a bronze medalist in the Olympics a couple of years, and uh, he had a training camp out uh, facilities for, for athletes. And uh, we went out there uh, with an altitude. And, um, you know, altitude is very beneficial to athletes, but I mean, you have to be careful as well going out to altitude. But I, I think the thing that benefited me most was to spend six weeks just continuously training every whole day at a high level. You know, and when, when I came back, I was flying for a while. Yeah, and I know that in, in that same piece, then, that, that that guy came from Dublin to West Clare, and you took him around the hills of Colmean and Kildare. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. photography uh, probably had an impact on your training as well, did it? Yeah, well, that's it. He came down, and uh, the very first run, he just looked at me, and he just said, hey, power, in the middle of the run, he said, now I know why you're good. And I said, why? <laughs> These hills. I didn't even know there was hills here. So, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I remember one time, one year we were running poorly. We ran a couple of poor 10Ks across Europe. So we were like, we'll call it a day for the season or whatever. And I just said, Peter, come on down. 
spend the week with me. We'll go across the Kerry to Castle Island to run a 3K and then we cut the silage and he was here. And, and it, was, it was a great education for him and, and something different. And we relaxed for the week and we went off to Castle Island and the two was, ran uh, a great race and uh, we ended up running some great races for the rest of the season. So it was just that little change. So, it, it, so there is times and places like the remote parts of, of West Clare, uh, you know, can work to your advantage. Absolutely, and obviously it, we we all know about your successes in terms of those those nine cross country titles. Like, at at at, at any stage, did, did it kind of dawn on you that Jesus, this this run is going. I have four. I have five. You know, let's let's make a streak out of this. Yeah, look, it's what happened. And every year, I just took them. Like, I forgot about the ones in the past because it was the one that was I was going to run, and now was the most important one, and I still didn't want to lose. Like, and then next thing they started gathering, and uh, you know, uh, and there was times where '98 I ran Dublin Marathon three weeks before the national counties, and, and the Dublin Marathon didn't really go well for me. I was a bit frustrated in my career. I was just like, and I ran the marathon without being prepared properly, but I, I still came back. And uh, I was burning in that race, and, and I still hung in there and, and concentrated on every step. I remember my days in the muck. And, and, and next thing, I was, I was climbing back to the, the, the leaders, and uh, uh, that was probably the hardest one to win. And, uh, 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 yeah, I mean, it, it took two or three years before I realized there was a streak going on. So. But it's obviously a, a, a huge source of pride, I'd imagine, for you to reflect on, is it? Yeah, look, it's one I'm most remembered for, but uh, I've also run some great races. The pack of the nine cross countries, like you know, but but the biggest thing about the nine was just to put the nine consecutively year after year. It's very hard uh, to to be right on the day every year. So, but um, I, I, I it was a good time of the year for me. November, I seemed to I was clicking to good gear, and uh, you know, it came to uh, towards the end. I thought they were nearly expecting me to take on the race uh, to win it, maybe so <laughs> maybe the whole way. The middle, I'm not quite sure. But look, I was I would like to go again. Uh, I went close to it, but I was getting old, and uh, I just pulled, tweaked the hamstring before the, the tenth one, and uh, I still ran a good race. But uh, it's, it's not easy to win, and you have to be you have to be as a hundred percent. Was there an incident with a, a cow coming out of a box that also impacted on one of them? Ah, sure, look, I, 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 I have a few accidents, I've broken all the things like that. I mean, they are, they are, they are, the things that they do affect training, but, um, you know, uh, I, I, I can't remember now which one that was, but I, I think the one with the tenth one was, was the hamstring, but um, I, I can't remember. It seems like a long time ago now, but, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, and I mean, then the, the fact of your career developing as it did, did you find yourself changing the style of way that you would attack a race? Like I think I read somewhere where there was some race in the States where you had gone up and attacked the leaders and kind of felt that you'd blown up halfway through and then kind of oh, yeah. adapted it then when you came home to another race that you ran. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look at it. Yeah, sometimes you make mistakes and you get carried away and you don't know how well you're going to run until they look at you can prepare all your life uh, mentally and physically and until the gun goes you don't know how, 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 how you're going to go and it's nearly a relief to know after like so many metres that yeah, I'm going to have a good one here today and uh, I, I remember being in Indianapolis and I mean, look, there was a lot of pressure it was my second year in the States and uh, the, uh, it was you know I, I'd been winning everything right up to the national districts conference everything you know and uh, now I was at nationals and I thought I could do the same thing so I went to the front but I was racing people like Bob Kennedy like he, he was sub 13 minutes by there man he ended up being and Matt Cal was in the race and it was just Bruton, a lot of these good runners, and I just went to the front, and I just kept going, but little did I know I was going too hard, <laughs> you know, and, and I just stitched and blew up in the middle of the race and finished a hundred or something, a man that thought he could nearly win the race, <laughs> so yeah, I've made mistakes, and as you say, I, I, I hope I learned from those mistakes, and um, you know, uh, usually the following week, you, you, do, you do reap the reward from the mistake, you know. Yeah, but I suppose what I was wondering was like, we'll say, was there a, was there a, a different uh, style to the way that you won your first cross country as opposed to the ninth? If you get me, you know, did you, did you kind of sit back more? You know, I was more careful. I was I was more careful on the first one. You know, I was racing David Buck. He was he, he was defending champion, and and um, Mike Root was also in the race. He was a great miler, and. Uh, you know, um, I remember the race. I, I, I just hung on to the leaders all the way until the last lap, and there was one big hill. And for some reason, I bust up that hill, and I kind of won by default in a way. Like, but I didn't think I could win. And then 
you know, but then you, you go in confidence, and, and, and a lot of times I control the races. But that, the first one, it was just cagey and just sat in. But after that, I always contributed. And, you know, it depends. If, they, every year there was always someone different to challenge me. So you think who was challenging you? You know, whatever leg speed they had or endurance or, you know, whether you need to be going half from the start or just holding for kicks and things like that. Like, so, it, it, year to year different. But the first year I definitely was cagey because I hadn't won one before. And uh, I, I came home surprised that I had won, to be honest. It was delicious. Absolutely. Did you ever miss it? No. <laughs> That's the short answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, I, I enjoyed it. It was my life. It was what I did. And I like to think whatever I'm doing, I'm committed to it. And I mean, I know I mentioned that earlier on. I'm, I'm, I'm a dairy farmer now and I love it. And I'm committed to it. And I'd like to think that I get the same performance out of my, out of the, the farming as, as I did out of my running. And uh, I suppose that, that kind of motivates me. But I always knew that I could pack it in. And maybe if I had a different job, maybe I'd miss it more. But I come in and even for a race, <laughs> you know, I sit down not to be talking out again after being out all day in, in, in our farm. And I'm, I'm a relatively small farmer in a way, and it's, you know, it's a 50 cow herd. You do a lot of physical work. The bigger you are, the less physical work you do. So I, I'm getting plenty of exercise out there. But uh, there's times, and I'd like to. If I could jog and just stay fit, but I don't really enjoy jogging. I, I end up going a small bit too hard, you know, and the body doesn't allow it anymore. Like, and it's not, I don't, I, I didn't wear out for running, but from from the, I'm hitting for 50 now, from the years of farming and things like that, you, you know, we should be more careful of our bodies, like you know, lifting and things like that. Like, so you, you feel like backs and things like that have be tightened up. So, um, so I don't really jog or anything like that. Do you think the, the athletics gene will pass to the next generation of powers? Uh, I have three small fellows, sure. Uh, and uh, they're, they're all young. They're just back from soccer training. They had a uh, whole training yesterday evening. They're doing football, they're doing swimming, they're doing running. Uh, they like sport. Uh, I'm hoping that, um, you know, they're, they're excelling something because I think every young lad needs something to keep him out of the trouble, you know. And it's good to be see, keep him grounded. So, but uh, maybe they will. Maybe it'll be a runner. Maybe it'll be a, a, a hurler. I, I don't know. But uh, we definitely, whatever they want to do, we will encourage them and take them. Brilliant. Tell me, you hear a lot of sports people kind of when they're asked about where their medals are. That oh, it's in it's in the mother's drawer or it's in yeah. somewhere. Are yours on display or, or where where are they? At the no, moment? no, no, no. They're in a toolbox, a small toolbox packed to capacity underneath the stairs in the cupboard that I take out every now and again. I show it to the boys, you know. So. Um, yeah, so there's some nice medals in there, but, uh, there's, there's, a, there's, you know, I have a lot of national medals, even though I've, I've nine consecutive ones in a row, I have a lot of other national medals, I've just been talking about it in there, but you never seen anything, so, um, no, and they're not on display, I'm afraid. Right, and, and do they be curious, like, do the lads ask the story behind any particular medals or anything like that? No, no, they wear them, they're, they're, they're young, and they wear them around their neck for a while, and not one of them, you know, and then I find a ton somewhere, and I just take them put it back in the box again, so. Look at, they hear things, that, that I was a good runner and things like that, and, you know, so, uh, unfortunately, they weren't around to see it, <laughs> but uh, they, still, they still know that we're involved in the run and they were fairly successful, so, I mean, that's, they, they like that as well. Excellent. You mentioned the dairy farming, I suppose, to, to get a word from you on that. It's probably a, a difficult time at the moment, is it, given all that has happened? Yeah, look, it's, it could have been worse. Uh, price got a hit, like, uh, like every, uh, three cent altogether in, in the whole that, like, but uh, I mean, I'm still, you know, of course we take more, but um, it could have been a lot worse. There was a fear there that maybe there'd be breakdowns, uh, like, in, in the system of processing, and that we maybe end up throwing away some mix, so uh, it, it worked out okay. I'm a dairy farmer. To be worse, it was a beef farmer. Beef seems to have taken a bigger hit altogether, but, um, you know, um, can't complain too much. Yeah, so confident that I suppose it's it is what it is. I suppose in terms of farming, yeah, I'm sure make it still a decent price, and it still looks like it looks like well, we deserve more the way the markets are at the moment. So we may get a rise the next time. Uh, we never complain. We get we always more when we get when you take a couple of cent off us, which is but every everything counts at the end of the year. Cool means Seamus Power there looking back on his incredible athletics career. Do stay tuned to the podcast. More to come in the coming weeks, including when we get that focus back on GA Action Bowl Club and County. Loads to talk about. Until then, do take care.